Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, and every nerd in the universe, assemble! It's time for With Reverence and Awesomeness. And welcome to With Reverence and Awesomeness. My name is Andrew. I'm here with Jacob and Ryan. This is our inaugural podcast. We are here to work out the kinks and share some fun thoughts on who we are, what we believe, and the things we enjoy, and how God has uh, used all things he has created to impact our lives. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to both Jacob and Ryan to uh, say a few words about themselves, and we'll start with Ryan. Sounds good. Uh, let's not forget about video games. Uh, we all share a common uh, love of video games here and uh, enjoyment of nerdy things. So, um, yeah, as Andrew said, my name is Ryan. Um, I have been uh, married for 13 years. I have uh, four sons and uh, grateful to uh, the Lord for what he's done in my life. And uh, I think just excited to share some time with these guys and uh, just talk uh, some theology, talk uh, life as a as a father, and uh, talk about some nerd stuff. So, Jacob? Yes, I also like nerd stuff. Uh, yeah, Jacob Ali. Uh, I've been a Christian since I was 15. I've been married now for coming up on 16 years. Uh, I've got four beautiful kids. Uh, love all things nerdy, Legend of Zelda, Star awesome. Wars. Awesome. S- uh, sign of just, approval. That's just the scratching the surface. How about you, Andrew? Uh, Yeah, I've been married for almost 16 years. Um, I have two children, uh, ranging from 14 to 11, almost 14. Um, And yeah, just looking forward to having some good time. I am an excessive nerd. Um, (laughs) I have a man cave that might prove as much. Uh, You know, it's which came in really useful for this podcast. Well, this isn't even the man cave, actually. So this is a storage room. Uh, in the, the basement. An- this is the annex. This is the, the annex. Cave. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. So um, it, it's uh, it's a lot less uh, full than it was just a week ago. So guys, what we're gonna talk about today? You know, it's uh, it's great to be here and to to try this out. And and uh, you know, I've talked to a few people already about what we're doing, and they're excited to to hear what we're talking about. You know, nice, ranging nice. from you know theology to what we're doing in our families and the fun things we enjoy, like video games. Mm-hmm. Um, but today. Today, we, we kind of wanted to start off with a topic um, going with, you know, uh, what what we're doing with our kids, you know. So part of it is the the things that we grew up with, you know, the movies and, you know, comic books and, and what we were kind of allowed to watch growing up and looking at them today and, you know, letting our kids watch them, you know, what's appropriate, what's not, and, and how we view those things um, from here on out, you know, and, and how, you know, they've changed our viewpoint and and, you know editing what our children see so um go ahead guys just jump in here jacob yeah well i just think it's it's interesting uh how many movies you might think of with fond memories from your childhood whether it be the goonies or et or back to the future right any of these great iconic movies that we remember so fondly and you think oh i need my kids to experience have to see it these movies you know and then you start watching one of them with your kids, and you're like, I didn't remember that word or that moment, or oh my goodness, my children, why did my parents let me watch this, yeah, you know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of resentment towards my family and my parents for letting me watch the things that I didn't know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it is shocking, you know? We were talking the other day as we were yep. formulating ideas, and, you know, it's like... <sighs> It was in a different time, I guess, you know, maybe our, our parents who, you know, who were Christian, some of us, I know uh, some of us don't have uh, or didn't have Christian parents growing up. So that, that kind of alters the, the mentality there. But, sure. you know, uh, us going into this now with, with open eyes of who God is and what he intends for us and how we are to raise our children really has kind of changed that dynamic. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, like you said, we were talking about this. I think like, I know for us, Back to the Future, um, and I think like movies connect us to like a time in our childhood, right? So we get excited thinking, you know, I remember sitting there in front of the TV watching that movie late at night or whenever it was and getting that excitement. Um, And so we want to connect that to our kids now, right? So we turn on that movie, like for me, it was Back to the Future, Um, you know, and then yeah, to like Jacob's point, right? You, you get to like a scene and then all of a sudden, like 
the f bomb drops or something and you're like whoa i don't remember that and i think movies probably maybe it has something to do with like the ratings back then you know and they've yeah. they've changed and things but yeah it's just like excitement and then like for us we stopped watching that movie um halfway through we couldn't even finish it because it was just so many cuss words throughout the movie that we did not remember so it's like we want our kids to enjoy those things but at the same time not at the expense of just hey watch whatever you want and try to filter it out it's 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 kind of like there's a time to kind of skip past some things and there's a time when you just got to make a decision like no i just this is not good for you, and just shut it off. So. And at the same time, we can use that. You know, right. they're going to ask, why are we shutting the movie off? And to yeah, where we sure. say, well, we're yeah. held to a different standard, you know, and, and maybe as you get older, you're you're going to grow in more maturity in your faith, and you you can come back to this and revisit it against your own convictions. But yeah. this is this is kind of where we draw the line at, at, at this time. So so yeah. currently, what, what are your guys' thoughts, and you and your wife, I'm sure have wives have talked about this, but what do you have as kind of your set policy for what like, you let your kids watch? I mean, do you have any rules that kind of guide that? Like, what, yeah. what's, what's the, the line for you? You know, I mean, my wife, uh, if there's even just like, you know, like fart jokes, like it's, it's a bit much for her. She really struggles to let her kids even watch that, you yeah. know. And again, watching some of the stuff that we watch as kids, you're like, that would be totally innocent if that's all that was going on, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless. Well, um, you know, for us, it's, it's you know, and that's all it is for all parents. You know, it's a learning curve, you know. So yeah, back in the day, you know, it was the, the Door of the Explorer and, and Elmo and all that other stuff. And even now looking at that, yeah, it's, I mean, it's questionable. I, I you think know. you should be disciplined for letting your children watch. Door, yeah, I, 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 yeah. Believe me, I I, I disciplined myself uh, for allowing that. But but even things today, you know, we've only just started really There's branching out. There's a live out. action movie coming out. Oh though, did you goodness, why did you have to even bring it up? Oh, I, just, I thought you might be interested. Um, no. <laughs> um, but with with the kids, you know, it's it's something. Even now, we've just started a lot more. PG-13, but even after doing some digging into it, I mean, we let them see Endgame. We went to the theater and actually watched it. Um, that was after, you know, just contemplating maturity and ages and things, and there's there's a lot of, you know, S-bombs in that one. And uh, so that's that's something that we've talked about ahead of time. We've, we've talked about, you know, what proper, you know, etiquette is for a Christian, absolutely, and how, again, we're called to a higher standard um, and to where, you know, at the same time, they, they hear it at karate. They're out in the world. They're hearing all these things, and not once have they used such language, and they, yeah. they almost are still oblivious to it. But as they grow older and more into the world they are, they're going to hear a lot more of it. Now, that's not to justify, hey, oh, you're going to see it so you may as well just here right. watch an r-rated movie go watch total recall like i was allowed to do it <laughs> yeah. like six years old um i wonder if my mom's going to be listening to this <laughs> anyway uh there might be some secrets sh- shared here mom sorry um anyway but but ryan what what do you think um yeah we uh we basically uh we try to watch stuff before our kids watch it right We're, we don't just give them like you know, free access to look up whatever you want, watch it. We, uh, we try to get recommendations from other parents. Um, and then if it's something that we don't know, we try to watch it first and kind of gauge the content. Yeah. Sometimes it's whether we go to the movies first and see something and then decide whether or not we can let the kids see it. And then other times it's a show, you know, we might look it up and see what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we, we generally try not to watch them, let them watch things like YouTube, um, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. or uh, things like that. So so not it's like Netflix. Old internet yeah, so it's like Netflix, and then it's like the kids' profile, and then it shows that we know. Um, you know, one of the cool things too is we've been getting back into like old shows. So the kids have been actually watching like Andy Griffith show. Which oh is, yeah, my kids went through a period of that. That was that was a great time. You know, they would, yeah. they would go and go watch on Netflix and just watch Andy Griffith. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's what my kids. This is do. fantastic. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about it. You know, and, and yeah. old wholesome fun. Of course, yeah. they they lie on every episode. Well, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's you there's know. always some huge lie that they're always covering up. And you know, I mean, right. no, I'm just saying, it's I'm not saying it's almost every episode. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I hear, I hear you. compared to what's on TV today, right? right. You it's know, true. this what? this is fantastic. Yeah, but it is. It, it's to your point, Jacob. It's like it is interesting because even in that, there's little things now that mm-hmm. many people look at and be like, "Wow, that's so good and wholesome," and it's like absolutely perfect. But right. we, even as Christians, we look at that today and we go, 
Yeah, I, me- I remember watching one episode where um, he's trying to teach, like, Opie about uh, giving. Mm-hmm. And he, like, chastises Opie for not giving enough. But then, uh, like, the, the, the lesson turns out to be, um, basically, it has to be, like, from your heart. Because he, he's basically holding Opie to a standard of, like, you're not giving, like, this much. He's giving, like, three cents. That, that's all you're giving. Mm-hmm. So he kind of makes it about the, the monetary value. But then later he realizes, like, oh, I'm wrong. It has to be out of your heart. Because when he finds out that Opie's not giving um, the money because he's trying to save up to buy, like, I think his friend clothes or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I remember that episode, actually. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so, so the point is, like, he's actually trying to do something because he wants to help somebody. Like, mm-hmm. he's trying to serve somebody. And then Andy, like, chastises him for it. So it's just even in that, though, we have to, like look at even shows like that that we think are like quote unquote wholesome. good yeah. wholesome yeah still have um you know like a worldly standard yeah. that they're trying to fit in which is obviously not god's standard and yeah. so even in that it's a good like teaching lesson for the kids right. so yeah i mean it tells us that no matter what the the movie or tv show or however wholesome it might seem or time period right. or time period sin is yeah. sin and it's always been yeah. you know yeah. we always yeah. have to you know, apply the Christian worldview. We always have right. to ask, you know, how would how would we look at this through the lens of Scripture and, yeah. and think about the issue there, you know? Yeah. And so I think it just it calls on us as, as parents, as Christian parents, to be engaged, right? Like we don't, Absolutely. like television should never, ever be the babysitter of your children, no. right? It shouldn't be the no, thing it's video that games. you just kind of... <laughs> that's, of course, <laughs> all video games... <laughs> Are by their nature perfectly wholesome and don't need to be questioned. That's, that's right. And are, and are uh, and uh, profitable, uh, profitable for babysitting. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, you know we got to keep our we got to keep our um, our nose to the grindstone on this and, and pay attention to what our kids are watching and not Absolutely. just assume yeah. that it's safe or okay. And the other thing I would bring up and just toss back to you guys is, I mean, so. You know, there's kind of the traditional things to be aware of in the sense of, well, is there language in this movie or, you know, is there sexuality or excessive gratuitous yeah. violence, right? But but now, uh, more than that, there are worldview issues or, or yeah, you might okay. say ideology issues mm-hmm. that we have to be on, on the aware of. I mean, so, uh, you know, I remember taking, it's probably been a couple of years now, my kids to Zootopia. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you seen Zootopia? Sadly, no. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, on one level, I think it's kind of sure. a fun movie, sure. right? Yes. Uh, Taking at the kids, absorbing the information. Level. Right, yes. right. But there's there's very clearly this underlying message of uh, acceptance mm-hmm. and that you can be whatever you want to be, oh, yeah. even changing your very species and yep. nature. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's just full of, of overtones to the... To the person who's paying any attention of the of the the equality, lesbian, gay, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. transgender movement, right. you know, right. and so it's almost like this kind of like subtle preconditioning of children yep. towards it is that. absolutely, yeah. and we talk to our kids about that because it is in almost every form of media um, the, that that worldview, especially, is being pushed these days. It seems. So, what for you guys? Like, what is the line? I mean, we you know we obviously have the the scriptural mandate that whatever is good whatever is true what is beautiful mm-hmm. like you know hold on to these things look to these things um and and we're to put away sin and and all kinds of evil from from our side i mean so how do how do we navigate what level is it okay to to watch something or, or participate so to speak in something that has evil and sin in it how do you look at that yeah that's uh that's the that, question man yeah that that's tough so i think uh it's it's tough because number one, we don't want to make unless scripture makes hard and fast rules, right? We don't want to do that because obviously, if we have like someone listening here, uh, we don't want to bind somebody's conscience. But Absolutely. at the same time, I think uh, to what you said earlier, it's like we have to compare everything through the lens of scripture, right? And we have to look at things from a biblical worldview. So I, I think that to say that we use our best judgment according according to what we know of the scriptures. Um, and things uh, also, too, sometimes we let things, we let the kids maybe watch something um, in order for it to be a teachable moment. I mean, there's, we're not going to put, you know, blatant, like, sexuality in front of them. Um, but, again, to your point of, like, some of the undertones and things, mm-hmm. that's a teachable moment, right? Because, you know, even, like, the little boys, like, my little boys, like, four and six, they're not going to pick that up. But, yeah. you know, my oldest son, he might pick that up or your, your kids might right. pick it up. Um, and that's something we can use to teach. But I think 
so it, it's hard to make like a fine line there and draw like a line in the sand. Um, but I think it's number one nudity, right. Is going to be, I think we could say hard and fast. That's right. going to be out of the question. Right. right. Um, but other than that, I think it's like up to each and every parent. And I would just say, you know, your children, well, you spend time with them, you know, what they're going to absorb, what they're not. And you know what you can make a teachable moment out of. So, um, yeah, it's, so it's kind of a gray area, but, but again, it has to be through our worldview and it can't be something that, um, teaches our kids a message contrary to the gospel. And if it is, we have to combat that and we have to tell them why that's, why that's wrong. We give them the truth and we tell them, you know, show them what's false about it. So. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, it's it's we're not going to be putting a Game of Thrones in front of our children, right. even yeah. when they're adults. We will be shunning them if they even go near it. But um, <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm totally kidding here. Um, but no, it's it's absolutely true through the lens of Scripture, and you know what what God has called us to to do and how to raise our children is is key. We're we're not here to bind the consciences of anyone, um, but we we hold to Scripture. And so when it's, it's gauged through entertainment, I know uh, Jacob and I had a conversation, or I think it might've been the three of us when he was talking about, you know, magic in entertainment and in books and things. So, you know, we're, we're okay with uh, C.S. Lewis and the Chronicles of Narnia, but we're not okay with, you know, Harry Potter, um, or we're okay with Tolkien, but again, you know, all these other facets. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where we, we judge on maturity and the, the, uh, you know, yeah. of our children and Jacob. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think we definitely want to be looking for, is there something redeemable mm -hmm. in watching this, mm -hmm. right? Um, because I don't think what we have to, I mean, we shouldn't be after some sort of perfect movie that is yeah. free from any <laughs> notions of, I mean, if you if you think about it like this, I mean, if, if you're only willing to watch or even read or engage in um, things that are completely free from any portrayal of sin, you can't even read your own Bible, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. the Bible is full of stories of Absolutely. heinous sin. Right. Yeah. Um, and so the question is, is, can I learn from it? Can I can I can the gospel be applied to show, you know, I mean, to shine the light on this thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and, and teach uh, virtue and truth. Um, and so I think, you know, there are a lot of great movies out there that certainly have things that we have to denounce. We had Slaughter mm -hmm. and Yeah, you know, this movie is great, but you know, that moment right there, right. how should he have handled that? What, what would be the right thing to do? Or do you think it was okay that, uh, you know, Opie lied to his yeah, parents, right. even though it was for yeah. a good, good reason, you know, those kind of, I mean, yeah. we just need to be active and engaged in that so that the kids can see gospel truth mm -hmm. in light of sometimes simple things. Yeah. And I, I, I think the idea is, um, we don't want to make our Christianity to portraying into our children about what I don't, what I can't do. Yes. We're not about right. Yes. We're, 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 we're not, <laughs> we're not legalists, right. right. It's not about a list of here's the things you can do. Here's what you can do. It's about the gospel. And so I think you find the things that are redeemable and you talk to those and, um, you find the things that are somewhat maybe iffy and you talk to those too and you you address that with your kids. And I think our our whole thing is is uh, helping them to grow and, and uh, train them in, in wisdom and we want them to be able to make decisions for themselves. It's not, we don't want them to grow up and just thinking, well, I can't do that because mom and dad said. We want them to think through things as they grow. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't do this because yeah. it leads to these types of things. And so... The point is not just, here's all the things you can't do, kids. Let's just leave that aside, and here's what you can do. Let's talk about the things you can't do, right. age-appropriate and, and, and maturity level, and here's why you should or shouldn't do them, right? Like, yeah. So I, I, we just, again, it goes back to filtering everything through Scripture and, and bringing the gospel to bear on those things yeah. and teaching them what are the proper ways to do things because – the scripture tells us that anything we do, we should be doing to the glory of God, right? So we have to be careful with that, but we have to try to do all things to the glory of God. So even some of the things that, you know, people might just just shun automatically, some Christians, we have to say, whoa, hey, is there something I can do here to redeem that? Or do I just need to, like, put it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, No, that's that's very, very good point. The other sides of it is, well, I'll let my kid watch whatever 
you know, whatever I, whatever I watch, they can watch, you know, and it doesn't matter. They're going to hear about it anyway. Or then the opposite of that is I'm going to put them in a bubble. We are going to homeschool our children to where they don't know anything about the other world. Um, do you homeschool? I do homeschool. Okay, so and we by, have three homeschooling families here in this room. Yeah, by, by, the, way, that, by the way, your comments are not, um, if anybody uh, would be listening to this, uh, homeschool, we're not knocking homeschoolers. Not at all, because all three of us we are, do it, yeah. are, are parents of homeschooled children. So, um, and we love it. You know, and it's 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 not to the point to where we're, you know, putting our kids in a bubble because they are exposed to the world. They, you know, they have outside of the household programs and even beyond church, because I know that that's sometimes a correlation in a lot of people's mind. Well, we were just just took my uh, son to get some vaccines at the doctor the other day. Right. And and the, the doctor asked about school and, and we said homeschool. The doctor just turned and looked at my wife and, and kind of had this like. Well, how's that going? Like it was this yeah. very like anticipation. Like you don't teach them anything, right? Like you don't. Yeah. They don't read. They don't do or yeah. whatever. And she's like, "Well, we classically homeschool actually." And there was like a an assistant in there. She's like, "Oh, so you like do Latin and stuff like that?" You know, like, yes, that's correct. You know, nice. Uh, but it's it is just funny because there's yeah, these conceptions. There are. Yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people think like the kids are locked in the house all day, like doing mm-hmm. nothing. Like yeah. you know. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people a whole other podcast. We're not making topics. our own. Yeah, I know that'll be said. Yeah. We're, not making, <laughs> we're not making our own clothes uh, no. yet. No, Which would be just awesome. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are actually That's surprised a lot to find out like, how social the kids are. Oh, yeah. Your kids how, especially. But, you know, yeah. I think people have a conception of kind of the old school homeschool approach, yeah. which which was that, like, I'm afraid of the world kind of thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Versus what I think a new wave of homeschooling is, which yeah. is a little yeah. bit different. And attitude. there's a lot of, you know, non-Christians who are homeschooling now, too. So, That's like you're saying, it's yeah. a new wave. But we'll save that for another topic. Uh, that that wasn't even my bullet points for us to discuss. All but right. So now we've got a new one. Um, <laughs> but anything else we wanted to touch base on, on, you know, what media is in our households, what it looks like, and... Um, anything we wanted to, to further move forward with or we want to go on to let's, another topic? Well, let, let's hit two birds with one stone here. Right. Let's talk video games, right? Okay, well... We, they, we love video games, yeah. okay? We're nerds, but yes. let's let's talk about... Um, like, let's talk about content of video yes. games, right? Because that's a that's hot a topic point. among parents too, right? right. Yeah. Is, so not only do we... We got to worry about movies and TV, but, but video games. Mm-hmm. You know, some parents uh, don't let their kids play a game like Fortnite, right? Mm-hmm. The biggest, like most popular game out there and it's very cartoon there's no blood and things no gore um but a lot of parents won't let that and that that's fine i'm not knocking that at all but um you know it's like how do you draw the line on games like do we let pl- kids play video games do we not let them what kind of content all that so i mean that's that's like a whole separate um topic but you know that'll kind of like get us like it'll it'll fill some video time games. for sure yeah it, so. it'll prep us for like the video game like so you know we can we can dive into that or we can save yeah, it but no, uh, let's just since we're on the, like the topic of like content right sure video game because i like i'm opposed to i i guess video games like that swear and like obviously yeah. like really really graphic and like nudity and things like mm-hmm. sorry kids can't play that unless yeah. i can turn those features off and i know some games allow that but some yeah. are some are pretty mature and, and don't don't sure. allow. So, yeah. I mean, and there's so many out there these days too that that can fill up the kids' times when it's like video game time. Mm-hmm. That I don't think they need to have access to every game. So it's like yeah. it's not a loss if they can't play Mortal Kombat 11, right? Which I know is yeah. new and awesome, uh, yeah. but it's not a loss even though the kids want to play it. Or Days Gone, you know, is on yeah. the boards everywhere. Yeah, um, yeah, right. So, so yeah, so. no, I, I totally uh, understand. And and so with our kids, you know parenting was in education so um you know we would always like mute the sound you know if there were oh, a yeah. game with bad words but you know it's yeah. it's not horrendous content but yeah. you know they they'd watch me play halo and they'd even play halo a little bit you know and i justified it you know this is me growing as a father i justified it well you know it's it's mostly humans killing aliens aliens aren't real you know so it's just that but so, so you can't hear you them don't cuss. Let your kids play anymore oh no they still play okay. yeah no no so i totally let my son play halo Oh yeah, no, I I do. Yeah, no, they they play Halo. And, and by the way, did you see there's another Halo coming out? Yes, there is. I still haven't played the most recent one because I don't have an Xbox One. So I'm kind of behind the curve. We'll, well talk. I, we'll I, talk after. <laughs> yeah, I, I barely play. I'm like not a huge Halo fan to be honest with you, but I I know the new character. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the new one is coming out, so at some out. point I'll have to test it. Now well, I, ha- I have an Xbox now. Yes, you do. <laughs> but yeah, so Halo was one of the things that we we muted. You know sure. the the language because they were a little younger. You know, but something we noticed is our youngest, if he played it a lot with with his brother, 
he would get angry and he would hurt his brother. Okay. So that's where we had to make some adjustments. Like yeah. you're not playing that anymore until you see we see uh, growth, you know, and maturity. And and you know he would get better. He wouldn't have any out, uh, outbursts any time. And then all right, we'll we'll slowly let him start playing some some of these games again. And he'd he'd revert back to it. So it took a few years for him to mature and and go through yeah. that to where he's not you know trying to beat his brother up or kick him you know and you know bite him whatever it was you know and uh, it, it's odd that those correlations that violence or, or whatever it was that was triggering when he would lose that's when he would get angry and coming from a, a guy who has had a temper over the years and has been a lot better since but uh you know i can understand you know how that's a trigger well one of the things that interests me about this discussion is um you know, some parents will say, well, definitely no Halo or Call of Duty or those kind of, you know, killing each other games. And things like that, which, I mean, I understand. I especially understand if we're talking about things that are much more graphic, some of the, uh, like, Grand Theft Autos and yeah. things like that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, but but some of the same parents who would say no to something like Halo, where it, you know, where it is a futuristic military game shooting invading aliens trying to destroy humanity, you know, I mean, um, but they probably wouldn't balk at their kids kind of outdoors like playing cowboys and indians cop versus exactly. robbers type yeah. stuff yeah. you know yeah. where you're pretending to shoot your actual friend you know right. and so i just i, I just i always kind of wonder what's what's the what's the place for violence and play yeah. at all you know or, or or mocking any kind of combat you know yeah. what are we imitating i'm kind of you know i mean on one hand and and uh, I don't know how much I've thought about this uh, from a biblical perspective but like just on one hand i kind of think you know it's boys are supposed to be kind of aggressive you know like there is a role for men to to be protectors and things like that and so i I want my boys to to not be afraid of the idea of playing a kind of rough and tough game or 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 even have the idea of you know you know sometimes you actually have to shoot somebody because it's the right thing to do which i know that sounds crazy but but unless you're a complete pacifist you you probably believe that's true right? right yeah right yeah no, that's that's a fair point. You know, I, I guess the, the the game they like to play now is infection, okay. so zombies yeah, and right. things like that, because that's the new craze. You know, yeah. zombies. I don't think I've let my kids play too many zombie games, but uh, you know, there's 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 another line. You know, See, because I love of the how old Resident Evil games, the old Resident Evil. Games. The new ones are not bad, sir. They're crazy. Well, <laughs> the newest they've... seven. Okay, so I haven't played that. Okay. Um... Have you played the remake of two? No, I haven't played that. Either. Okay, that was really so, good. I'm talking anyway. like I'm talking about like Resident Evil, like one and two, yeah, and Resident yeah. Evil Zero, yeah. and all those. You played know, them all. Back on GameCube, especially. He can't play those kind of games. Why is that? They freak me out. <laughs> That's the point. Exactly. I know. I know. See, the, 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 in I my know. okay, so again, I haven't played the newest one. It's but, adrenaline. Uh, <sighs> the newest one actually looks scary again, uh, but like some of the more recent ones have been just like over the shoulder shooter and stuff and it's just like what what is this isn't this is nothing that this used to be that was good about it you know yeah five six and scary not you worth to think it. your way through things yeah you know? it wasn't just shooting all the time yeah yeah seven there's not a lot of shooting it's all puzzles and scare the tar out yeah, of but yeah. what i've seen that. of seven I'm, I'm guessing you don't let your children play that one <sighs> No. They don't watch me play it either, right. you know, so... I would um, want to me play probably... Resident the VR Zero edition? Zero oh, man. I've wa- I think I... Have I tried that? When I was over here, I watched you. I think you did, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, you, that's freaky, man. Yeah, you had trouble with that one. <laughs> that's freaky. <laughs> anyway, so, I don't, yeah. I don't enjoy that. Like Even, it, it, like, even like Days Gone, right? It looks yeah. awesome, and I, I maybe I'd play it. My son was asking me about it today, actually, you but... It's just, it freaks me out. Like, a lot of language, but you should play it. Yeah, it just freaks me out, that kind of stuff. That just that intense, like, being chased and knowing, like, there's, like, a horde of zombies right behind yeah. you. Yeah, I seem to avoid not only games, but games like that, but but uh, even music that has a lot of language, because I know that personally negatively affects me. Yeah, it's, yeah, me it's, too. It's too. I much don't like soul, it. So. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. It, yeah it, it impacts me, and, you know, the more we hear and more we engage in it, it, it can come out of us. I'm, I'm yeah. guilty of that by far, you know. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm surrounded in a worldly environment at work all day, every day, and it's left and right, and it's just an accepted thing, and I have to be very cautious and repent when it does impact me. Um, so anyway, but um, but the video games, you know, it's uh, it just as a side note, you know, playing Days Gone, uh, there are a few moments, because you walk up to a trunk looking for a part, 
and a and zombie it, pops yeah, out. I, that I that made that, me yeah. jump. Yeah. I will say that. So uh, anyway, I had to yeah. I had to share that one little tidbit. But um, uh, yeah, let, let's let's talk a little bit about our backgrounds. All right, right all right. So we'll start with Jacob. Okay. Just just like our like our church background. You don't yeah, not yeah, like yeah. testimony. And yeah, all we that don't stuff. have to just, name the church or anything. Like no, that, no, no, no. Right. You know. Just sort of like the progression there. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, after like when I first became a Christian, I was kind of in the Pentecostal charismatic. Um, churches, uh-huh. so not not any particular Pentecostal denomination, just kind of non-denominational. But you know, I mean, stuff like uh, flags swinging, watch your head. You know, people rolling around on the floor and barking like dogs. And oh wow, oh yeah, it was pretty intense. You some, know, some, I haven't some witnessed real... that in person. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking like Benny Hinn stuff here? Oh, we're definitely. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, right. I didn't. Slave, I didn't know spirit type stuff. I mean, as a young teenager, uh, I mean, my parents were Christians. You know. And like we went to church when I was real little, but we hadn't gone to church for a long time. And so when I came to the Lord, I just kind of came through a youth group and a friend, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so I didn't know jack squat about the Bible, but I was very zealous about God and I wanted whatever God had. And so all this stuff's going on and it looked kind of crazy to me, but I'm like, well, if it's what the Lord wants, then yeah. I'm in, you know, that was kind of my yeah, attitude. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, started reading my Bible more and got uncomfortable with some of those things. And, yeah. you know, um, when I was 19, I met my wife, got married, moved out to her town and started going to a Southern Baptist church um, because we had to find some place to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd already been uncomfortable with the whole charismatic thing for a while. So I, I kind of jumped in both feet there into the Southern Baptist life. Actually, eventually started being a youth minister and was ordained a Southern Baptist minister and did about 10 years or so of ministry in Southern Baptist churches. Oh, okay. Uh, and then after I came out to Arizona, where we're all at currently, the first time I came out here with uh, Pastor Joel, pastor of our church, um, he and I both uh, gradually moved more and more reformed and uh, ended up embracing covenant theology, pedo baptism, Presbyterian ecclesiology, mm-hmm. and the whole nine yards. And so that's just the, the brief snippet here. But uh, yeah. it was kind of a wild ride theologically for me over the years. Uh, but I think it's always been on a certain trajectory, which is towards scriptural faithfulness. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. That, yeah. yeah, and then just as a side note, you know, uh, Ryan and I have known each other and been friends for a few years now, but we've only gotten to know Jacob here in the, the last month or so um, since he's mo- recently moved back um, with us. So um, we, we just all kind of clicked really quick because, uh, you know, we share a, a love of Christ and uh, his word and to be faithful to it. And of course, our our worldly and uh, yeah, our, our, our yeah. worldly pastimes when it comes to video games and, and, and entertainment. And what brings three for three new friends together more than in the first month starting a podcast? Well, there's I mean, that. Isn't yeah. that what isn't that what all all new friends do? I think so. that makes sense. Yeah, or maybe I just learned should. six new things so, about Jacob just from him we'll talking just now. So, you know. Want to make lifelong friends, guys? Start a podcast. Start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, when you go ahead next? Oh, so um, okay, I. Uh, I, let's see, I, I became a Christian, um, so I think around 2006, um, started going to a, a Baptist church with some friends, and uh, the Lord got a hold of me and my wife around the same time, and um, and uh, we then moved out to Arizona probably about a year later, and then found another Baptist church, a Reformed Baptist church. Um, so we've never, you know, I like to, I, I love hearing about people's like, stories as they come through churches like yours right we've never had to like wrestle with the doctrines of grace and like reformed theology it's just always been presented to us so praise god for that um and you know we uh we were in that church the last church baptist church for about 10 years and then just recently came to a presbyterian church and um you know just like jacob said like biblical faithfulness that's all we wanted it's always been about the gospel and we just want to know, like, you know, how to how to best follow the Lord and, and scripturally what what's there. It, it was never about like a, a system of doctrine or anything like that. We just so we we came to uh, the current church where I, which is a Presbyterian church, and uh, as Baptists, right, and kind of like arms crossed, and you know, hey, we're not going to believe in like all this stuff, but nevertheless, it was about the gospel. So we started studying, my wife and I, and. Um, just said, hey, we'll we'll listen to what these brothers are saying, right? And we'll study it out. And just, um, it's been 
I don't know, six, eight months uh, of studying. And obviously, like, the main main topic there is, like, baptism, right? And so studying through that and just my convictions have changed on that. And so uh, here I am, you know, praise God. And I, mm-hmm. I, I, I praise God for his covenant faithfulness and in, in the way he covenants with his people. And, um, yeah, so, and we've had our uh, kids baptized too, so. Yes, you have. That's, uh, praise you the know. Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Burn those Baptist bridges. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah, I, I got to start that trend from our little uh, Exodus group. Um, so I, I have uh, a fairly similar story to Jacob, actually. So I was, uh, I was raised in the church. My mom actually grew up in the OPC, um, but I had only ever known like Assembly of God and Calvary Chapel and other non-denominational churches. And, you know, I, I went to a Christian school growing up. So the word of God has always been present in my household and in my life. So that, that has been a blessing to me. Now, whether or not I uh, was receptive to it at all aspects of that time frame, I have always said that, you know, I believe in Jesus. I believe he came to die for my sins. And saying is one thing, but living it out was a whole other process, especially in my teen years. Um, but but God is. I, I have gone back and looking over my life, I've always seen the hand of God in my life through absolutely everything that has transpired, and I mm-hmm. praise Him for it. Um, you know, I got married at the age of eighteen. Um, so my wife, uh, yeah, it'll be sixteen years this year. So it's it's been something that. Uh, We've gotten to grow in together. We were in a non-denominational church, non-denominational church, if I could say it right, up in Payson, um, and we uh, had to leave it because there was, um, you know, an insurgence from a new pastor that we had um, in the um, uh, emerging church movement, and so a lot of uh, different things that we had noticed that uh, just were contrary to what we understood in the Word of God, and so we we removed ourselves from it, um, and so did my my mom and stepdad, who were um, you know on the elder boards. That was unfortunate. Um, so we were without a church for a while while we were there. We went to a few other ones that just kind of we sat in the back corner and and, and worshipped. Um, but then we moved here for work in the valley and. Uh, Took us about a year to uh, find a, a, a good church to where, you know, we weren't sitting in. It was a memorial service for one of their elders, and they were saying, oh, well, one of our parishioners had prophesied that he'd get better. Didn't work out. Um, <laughs> but they didn't get it wrong, perhaps. And so we had to get up and leave um, because that was contrary to our understanding of the Word of God. Um, and so uh, we went back to the same Reformed Baptist church that uh, Ryan was talking about, and we were there for uh, ooh, I don't know, about five, six years. Um, and then through the same circumstances, we are now at um, this this OPC. And uh, it has been a, a journey. Um, I did resist the doctrines of grace when they were presented to me um, from my own mother because she went back to the OPC uh, after. It's irresistible. It is. It's funny how that is. You know, yeah. there's like some divine plan behind it all. Um, but my mother was, was slowly working, uh, working on me with, uh, materials and things. And I was very resistant. Um, but then we started even going, when we first started going to this Reformed Baptist church, I, I was resistant, um, and until it was explained, you know, we were going through, uh, the confession actually. And there was some, some hard truths when related to scripture were very evident and it, it, it clicked, you know, absolutely. Once the light was on, it was on, and I was hungry to, to understand more. Um, so that was a blessing, absolutely. I learned a, a ton um, and grew in my faith and grew in grace because of that church. And now um, I feel like I'm growing even more and even faster now that we're at this this new church, um, yeah. you know, in, in light of the circumstances. I also have, have uh, you know, baptized my children because I see it in Scripture. I see the promise of God and His his covenant to his people. Um, so I am, I'm praising God daily for these, these blessings. And again, I've seen the hand of God in every aspect that I've gone through, through every trial with any church and so on. And it's just all glory to him. Yeah. God's yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think one of the, like the threads that kind of runs through there too, is, uh, you mentioned studying like the confession and, mm-hmm. Um, right. We, we hold a confession in its right place. We don't elevate it above. Scripture. Absolutely. Right. And, um, you know, as long as it's a faithful summary of the scriptures, right? And, and scriptures are ultimate authority. But, um, you know, I, I think one of the threads is, is we've come to where we're at now. And 
it's about biblical fidelity. And I think mm-hmm. the confession helps us. We, we, we talk about it being like a guardrail on, on you know, the, the sides of the road. And so it helps us to stay away. And, and, and one of the things, you know, like from, from your guys' past, not, not so much mine, but um, I think one of the things that causes you to leave churches is you go in and you see, wait a minute, this, this isn't scriptural, right? right. And, and so part of that is when you don't have a sort of standard of mm-hmm. truth there, yes. number one, if it's not the scriptures, um, and, and number two, if you don't have like a secondary standard to say, this is what we believe the Bible says is right, and this is what we believe the Bible says is wrong, if you don't have that, right. people do all kinds of crazy things in churches, and, and, and sadly, we see that in, in much of Christendom today is, is a lot of, a lot of uh, faulty uh, worship and stuff. And that's, I know one thing that we're all passionate about is, number one, a confessional church and being uh, faithful to the scriptures, um, and also, you know, the regulative principle of worship, right, is, is worshiping God how he uh, calls to be worshiped in the scriptures, not by our own imaginations and not by, hey, whatever we feel like that week. So, right. um, you know, I don't know if you want to dig into the, like, the, the, the RPW a little bit, but maybe, um, you know, if anybody doesn't know what that is, maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, um, I think it's, a, it's important to state at this point for anybody that might be listening, you know, we're, we're not trying to say also that Christianity is no wider than Presbyterianism. Right? No, like, yeah, no, exactly. absolutely exactly. not. Um, no. And I, I don't think you said that, but I just want to right. say that no, very it's clearly. Good, yeah. um, you know, the, the church extends beyond the borders of the OPC or other Presbyterian yeah. or and Reformed praise God denominations, for yeah, absolutely. Amen. Amen. Um, I mean, I, I know that I was, uh, I believe I was genuinely a Christian, even when uh, mm-hmm. I held to doctrine, I would now abhor at this oh, point. Oh, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's important to, to make that point. But yeah, the regular principle of worship is essentially to say that um, we believe that God is to be worshipped as he himself commands mm-hmm. that we worship him, that he yeah. lays out the principles for worship. Um, and, and this is... Um, you know, this is uh, in contrast to kind of, uh, I think, the, the normative principle, which is the, the idea of saying that, well, as long as God doesn't forbid it in Scripture, you know, it's fine. So, I mean, God never says that you can't have a juggling act during the surf- service, right? So, therefore, you can have a juggling act during the service, you know. Um, the regular principle of worship says, no, what are the elements in Scripture that God actually commands uh, that we, how we approach him, that we should be doing these things, right? And so yeah. we intentionally do those things uh, and, and try not to add anything into the, the public gathered worship service of the church uh, that cannot be clearly seen in Scripture as something God mandates for us to do. So yeah. the, the preaching of the word, the singing of psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Another topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Thanks sacraments, so right, of Lord's Supper, baptism. Um, you know, these things are, are evidently supposed to be part of the worship of the church. This is commanded by God, so it would be sin not to engage in them, right? Um, and, and as far as, you know, what else can we bring to worship? Well, I think the scripture is sufficient to tell us how God wants to be worshiped. So yeah, we, we, we need to make sure that whatever we're doing, we can see scripture from there. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Very good. Great. Absolutely. Great rundown. Yeah. Thanks for that. So I just want to thank you both for being thank here you. and, uh, sitting in my basement for, uh, for a, a good hour. That's it. Um, basement podcast. That's right. That's Maybe right. we should change the name. Basement um, podcast. Well, we look forward to another episode in a couple weeks. We will hopefully be improving our sound quality as we upgrade the studio as well and hope you'll bear with us as we grow in this new venture of podcasting. Until next time, thank you for listening to With Reverence and Awesomeness.